Hello and welcome. I'm Dana Kabunda and joining me today for a very special Skype interview is business strategist and reinvention expert Elizabeth Crook. She's also the author of the upcoming book, Discover Your Yippee, How to Live the Life You Love. Thanks so much for being here, Elizabeth. Thanks, Dana. So Elizabeth, I can't let the Discover Your Yippee go unnoticed. What exactly do you mean by yippee? Well, yippee is that feeling you get when you wake up in the morning, you say, I'm really excited about what I'm going to do today. It's going to be fun and fulfilling. And that's what everybody wants in their jobs. They want to be excited about it. And um, that's what you're here to share with us, how we can learn to love the job you hate. Um, it, it's something that a lot of people, I think, somewhere along their careers um, have found themselves in a job that's not quite as exciting as they'd like it to be. What do you say is the first step in learning to love that job? The first step is to know what parts of that job you do love. And I suggest that people take post-it notes and they brainstorm right down on each post-it note, one per post-it note, all of the things that you do all day. And then separate them into two piles. What are the things that you find energizing? Uh, and what are the things that you find draining? So for me, working with a new client is very energizing. What's draining for me is trying to learn that new software program and having to read all of the directions. Mm -hmm. That makes so much sense. And I would guess if you're doing things that are energizing you, you accomplish more. You not only accomplish more, you actually add more value because when we're doing things that engage our talents and our gifts, and those are really the things that energize us, then we just bring more of who we are to the job therefore making ourselves more valuable in that particular situation. And that's a key right there, the word valuable. Um, what Would you say that once you find what you're doing to add value, you could use that to get your boss on your side and maybe help you switch some of your job duties? Absolutely. And the key to that is really understanding what's important to your boss. What are the things that he or she is trying to accomplish? Is it to increase sales? Is it to reduce costs, to increase customer satisfaction, to uh, reduce accidents? Whatever that is. And then connect those activities that you love to generating a result in the area that is most important to your boss or your department or your company. Great. And, and I think that's important too, understanding the bottom line. I think a lot of times in a job, people tend to feel more like cogs in a wheel at, rather than somebody who's actually contributing to that bottom line. So connecting those dots. Absolutely. Boosts Absolutely. your confidence. I, I, that's such great advice. And just knowing where you fit into the bigger picture is also much more motivating. Mm -hmm. Morale, I, would, I just see morale going right through the roof with all of that. Right. So once you have all of that in place, would you recommend asking for a raise? I think once you have that in place and you are producing and creating results in those areas that you and your boss agree to, that's an excellent time to ask for a raise. And it's really engaging your boss in a conversation of establishing what has, what's been the value. How would you describe the value that my focus on this has created for the company or for our clients. And when you can create that value proposition, then it's much easier for your boss to say, well, gosh, of course you need a raise. That's such great advice. So you, 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 know, you enjoy your job more once you're doing activities that you enjoy that energize you. You enjoy your job more when you're making more money. What if neither one of those ideas works out and you still find yourself wanting to change jobs? What would you do then? And sometimes people change because their, in, their company goes under or they move to a new location. But understanding what really gives you that sense of satisfaction creates the criteria for you to use in looking for that next opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's great. So it's more about not necessarily just what your salary is going to be, but it's about how you fit into that job and how it fit in, fits into your yippee. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, I am so excited. <laughs> I want to go find my yippee. <laughs> Come. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. You, you have such great advice. And to learn more about Elizabeth, her upcoming book, and the free videos she has posted on her website, please visit discoveryouryippee.com. Thanks again for being here, Elizabeth. Thanks, Danette. Bye-bye. <laughs>